Sebastian and I thank you very much for serving you as an eloquent and capable cat advisor. What the Vice Chancellor pointed out is that we have never been short of ideas. We have never been short of uh, the journey we must travel. We have never been short of knowing where we are going. Those who know, and this is Karl Marx, has uh, opined that uh, the ideas of the ruling party at every epoch are the ruling ideas. The question that we need to ask ourselves today is whether we are in a dispensation where the ruling ideas represent the ideas of the very giants that the VC says we now stand on whose shoulders we stand. I would like to invite uh, Professor Kwesi but before doing that, I would like to read the statement that uh, Robert Sobukwe made when he appeared in court. And I hope this uh, provides the kind of context for Professor Brass as a presentation and also how it links to what the VC was saying. The whole notion of its implication becomes our responsibility. What we do now is to make sure that we demythologize, we demystify, and we sophisticate and at times complicate the, our stories. Robert Somugwe, when he appeared before a magistrate, was very clear, and I want to quote what he said. So the chief aims of the PSC are the complete overthrow of white domination and the establishment of a non-racial democracy in South Africa as well as throughout the whole of Africa. We regard it as our historic role to contribute towards a United States of Africa from Cape to Cairo, Morocco to Madagascar. For the same reason, we stand for government of the African, by the African, and for the African, with everybody owing his allegiance to Africa, and prepared to also to accept the rule of the African majority. The object of the PAC is to draw up a program of action which will be faithfully pursued instead of meekly reacting to the flow of white legislation from Parliament. Mangaliso moved on to say, it will be remembered that we refused to plead to the charges against us. We felt we had no moral obligation to obey the laws made by a white minority. The history of the human race has been a struggle for the removal of mental, moral, and spiritual oppression. And we would have failed had we not made our contribution to the struggle. We are glad we made it. If we are sent to jail, there will always be others to take our place. We are not afraid to face the consequences of our action, and it is not our intention to plead for this. These were the remarks that Sobukwe made, and if you read them, you're talking about an unapologetic stance by a hero of our struggle. But uh, Sobukwe was not alone. If you read Nelson Mandela, you find the same expression. And uh, when he appeared before a magistrate, a judge, Mandela made a similar comment. And I want to quote him. He said, I feel oppressed 
by the atmosphere of white domination that lurks around in this courtroom. Somehow, this atmosphere called to mind the inhuman injustices caused to my people outside this courtroom by this same white domination. I regard it as a duty which I owed not just to my people, but also to my profession, to the practice of law and to justice for all mankind, to cry, cry out against this discrimination, which is essentially unjust. I believed that in taking up a stand against injustice, I was upholding the dignity of what should be an honorable profession. The law as it's applied, the law as it has been developed over a long period of history, and especially the law as it is written and designed by the nationalist government, is a law which, in our view, is immoral and intolerable. I want to conclude by indicating the last statement that Mandela said, which must be of interest to our faculty of law. Mandela said, I was made by the law a criminal, not because of what I had done, but because of what I stood for, because of what I thought, because of my conscience. It has not been easy for me to separate myself from my wife and children, to say goodbye to the good old days when at the end of a strenuous day at an office, I could look forward to joining my family at the dinner table, and instead to take up the life of a man hunted continuously by the police, living separate from those who are closest to me in my own country, facing continually the hazard of detention and arrest, no man in his right senses will voluntarily choose such a life. But there comes a time, as it came in my life, when a man is denied the right to live a normal life, when he can only live the life of an outlaw because the government had so decreed. Consistent with uh, Robert Mugwe, Mandela concluded, I'm prepared to pay the penalty even though I know how bitter and desperate is the situation of an African in the presence of this country. And of course, he says, if his sentence is served, he says, I will still be moved by my dislike of the race discrimination against my people when I come out from saving my sentence to take up again as best I can the struggle for the removal of those injustices until they are finally abolished once for all. This set the scene in terms of historicizing ourselves in this history. But as uh, Professor Mtose indicated, theirs was largely a political struggle or manifested itself as a political struggle. We are now faced with a new struggle. Are we up to it, Professor Pratt?